Rumor reached home before them. She is naturally swift, and on that occasion, she was all the more eager to report these many strange marvels. So everyone hurried to collect by the shore, and the crowd, thunderstruck by the strange tale, displayed various emotions all at once. Tears, astonishment, inquiring interest, disbelief. When Callerho's mother saw her daughter's funeral offerings, she cried out in distress, I recognize everything, only you are missing, my child. Strange tomb robbers, they have preserved the clothing and gold and stolen only my daughter. Shores and harbors resounded as the women beat their breasts and filled land and sea with lamentation. But Hermocrates, a man of experience and used to authority, said, This is not the place to examine the situation. We should pursue our inquiry more in accordance with law. Let us go to the assembly. Who knows? We might actually need a jury. Before he had finished speaking, the theater was already packed. This assembly included women as well. The people were sitting there, greatly agitated, when Charias came in first, dressed in black, pale, unwashed, looking as he did when he followed his wife to her tomb. He refused to go up onto the platform, but stood below it. At first he wept for a long time. He tried to speak, but could not. The crowd shouted, Take heart! Speak! With a struggle he raised his head. This is a moment for grief, not for an oration, he said. I am compelled to speak by the same need that makes me live until I find out why Calerho has disappeared. That is why I sailed from here. I do not know whether my, to call my voyage successful or not. I saw a ship drifting in fair weather, weighted down with its own private storm, sinking in calm seas. We were surprised at this and approached it. I thought I was looking at my poor wife's tomb with everything that belonged to her in it, except herself. Dead bodies were there, many of them, but all were other people's bodies. This fellow, whoever he is, we found among them, half dead. I gave him every care, restored him to life, and kept him for you. Meanwhile, public slaves brought Theron into the theater in chains. He had an escort that befitted him. That is, he was followed by the wheel, the rack, fire, and whips. Providence was according him the proper prize for his efforts. When he had taken his position in the middle of the assembly, one of the magistrates asked him, Who are you? Demetrius, he replied, where are you from? I am a Cretan. Tell us what you know. I was sailing to my brother in Ionia when I was left behind by my ship. I joined a cutter that was passing that way. At the time I thought they were merchants, but now I realize they were tomb robbers. We were at sea for a long time, and all the others died for lack of water. I have just managed to survive, because I have never done anything wicked in my life. Syracusans, you are people celebrated for your humanity. Do not be more cruel to me than thirst and the sea. When he said this, in pathetic tones, the crowd were touched with pity, and perhaps he would have convinced them, even to the point of being given money to take him home, had not some divinity to avenge Kalerho felt indignant that he should be believed so unjustly, for it would have been the most outrageous thing possible for the Syracusians to believe that he alone had been saved because of his piety, when it was his impiety that saved him alone. But it saved him for worse punishment. Thus, a fisherman in the crowd recognized him and said quietly to the people sitting by him, I've seen that man before, wandering about our harbor. His words were quickly passed on to more people, and someone cried out, He's lying! So the whole crowd turned toward him, and then the magistrates ordered the man who had spoken first to come down. When Theron denied the accusation, the fisherman was more readily believed. At once they called for the torturers, and the impious rogue was whipped. He had fire applied to him, his flesh was torn, but he held out for a long time and almost overcame the torture. But conscience is a strong force in every one of us, and truth is all-powerful. 
with reluctance and slowly, thereon confessed. He began his story, I saw riches being enclosed in the tomb and assembled a gang of robbers. We opened the tomb and found the corpse alive. We carried everything away and put it in our cutter. We sailed to Miletus, sold the woman alone, and started to take everything else to Crete. But we were driven out into the Ionian Sea by winds. And you have seen what happened to us. He told the whole story but failed to mention one thing. The name of the man who had bought Kellerho. At this and these words, joy and grief over, came over everyone. Joy that Kalerho was alive, grief that she had been sold. Theron was condemned to death, but Charius begged that he should not be executed yet, so that he can come and show me who bought her, he said. Consider what I am compelled to do. Plead for the man who sold my wife. Hermocrates would not allow this. It is better, he said, to make our search more laborious than to allow the law to be broken. Syracusians, I ask you to recall my service as your general and my victories, and pay me back by saving my daughter. Send an embassy for her. She is a freeborn woman. Let us recover her. While he was still speaking, the assembly cried out, Let us all sail! And most of the members of the council rose to volunteer their help. I thank you all, said Hermocrates, for the honor you have shown me. But two ambassadors from the embassy and two from the council are enough, and Charius will sail with the group as leader. This was agreed and ratified, and thereupon he dismissed the assembly. As Theron was led away, a great part of the crowd followed. He was crucified in front of Kalerho's tomb, and from his cross he looked out on the sea over which he had carried as a captive the daughter of Hermocrates, whom even the Athenians had not taken.